Welcome back everyone for part three of our DIY 48RE build. Today we are just going to go over building the front pump. Where we left off with the last video, we went through and we cleaned up all the components so everything should be clean and ready to start going back together. As I'm putting these together, I'm going to give all of the components uh, one last final check. Uh, this is usually when I'm in inspecting them very well make sure that uh, you're not going to have any problems. So the first thing I'm going to start with, just moving front to rear, no order necessary on this. You can do any of this in any operation. We will get into stuff that is specific in the operation, but for right now, you can really do whatever, but I like to start front to rear. So the first thing we're going to do is start assembling the front pump. So the first thing we need to do on assembling the front pump is we need to reinstall the converter bushing. Your kit is going to come with a new converter bushing and a new converter seal. And the easiest way to install that, once again, either put the pump on some plates to space it up so you don't break the breather off, or in my case, I'm going to slide it over here. And then we're going to use our 36 millimeter socket once again and we're going to drive the new bushing in. Now, I like to use a little bit of red Loctite uh, when I'm installing these bushings, just to make sure that they don't spin on you. If you do have a bushing spin and it gets loose, it can send pressure to the front of the seal and it can cause a converter seal to leak. So uh, I use a little Loctite just to be sure and then always stake this and we'll get to that. So typically I just put a little bit, just a little bit, you don't need much, just around the outer perimeter of this here. And then you'll see, if I can find it, uh, where this is made, where these two are joined together. You want to make sure that you don't put that in the same place where you're going to be staking it. Uh, you want to make sure that you offset that. Now usually to get this square before I start driving it home, I'll just take the hammer and I'll just tap around it a little bit to get the bushing square and then I can start pressing it in with the new socket. So there I've got it nice and square, and this is one of those instances where lots of little taps are better than big hammer on it type taps, because you don't want to tear up the bushing here. You also want to make sure that you're pushing this in evenly, that you're not cocking one side more than the other, because that can try to make the bushing separate where it's joined together, and then it tears up the bushing. Okay, so now let's talk about the depth of the bushing. The way I like to do it is I like to drive the bushing in until the tapered edge uh, basically stops and it starts to become the straight part. But the easiest way you can tell that you have it deep enough is if you flip it over here. And as long as there's a little bit of bushing sticking up past the tabs where you can stake it over, uh, that's all that matters. You don't want to drive it all the way back to the pump gear here. You want to kind of center it up uh, the best that you can inside the bore here. So now that I've got the pump bushing installed, now I'm going to stake it. We're just going to use a flathead screwdriver again. And we are going to carefully put this on the edge of the bushing, right in the center of the stake pocket, and just give it one nice tap. Spin it over here to the other side, do the same thing. Now you can see that we have staked the bushing. Now I'll actually go through and I'll actually stake it uh, two more times on each side of my initial stakes, but uh, you don't have to do that. You can just do a single stake. With having the Loctite in there, it helps a lot. I'm just uh, over cautious with these. 
Okay, now we've got our pump bushing staked nicely. Now we can flip the pump over. And uh, you wanna clean off that excess Loctite that's in there uh, before you go putting the seal in, just to make sure that you don't have any problems. A uh, fun fact about Loctite is it actually doesn't harden up uh, just by air. What makes Loctite harden up is actually the lack of air. Uh, Jesse Harris told me that actually last year. So fun little fact there about Loctite. So that way you don't worry about uh, Loctiting something that shouldn't be because the only thing that makes it set up is the lack of air. Okay, so now installing the front seal. Same deal, I like to use a little bit of Loctite on it just to make sure that it doesn't back out. Uh, this really should never spin. If this is spinning, then you probably have an alignment issue. You forgot to put a dowel in when you put the transmission in or you have uh, something very wrong going on because the only way that this should spin is if the uh, converter is off-centered. So, I just sit this down in here. I usually take the hammer again just to get it square. And then the quickest, easiest, flattest way I've found to do this, take a plate from your press or your press plate, and in my case this is a uh, half inch piece of steel, and just Just like that, it's seated all the way in, nice and square. Now, just for good measure, I'll lightly go around the outer rim of it with the hammer. Just to make sure that we seal up that Loctite really good. And then I'll come here, clean it off. And now we have a really nice pump seal. Now, one thing that you want to watch, especially if you fight with the pump seal, uh, not getting it square, I like to smack it with that steel plate because it just sinks it right away. If you're trying to chase it around with a hammer and it keeps flopping around on you and you gotta hit it a lot, a lot of times it can pull the inner metal spring out of the seal and that thing will go flying and you won't realize it. Well, without that little metal spring, this seal isn't doing its job. So when you put all this in the truck, the converter, it'll start leaking between the converter and the seal here, and you get to pull it back out and do it over again. All right, so now the next task of the pump is, we've already inspected the pump before uh, when we were cleaning it, but now that everything's good and clean, you wanna just inspect these gears, make sure that the face of them isn't tore up, same for the inner gear, just making sure that the face isn't tore up. And then this is where we start getting into some specific orientation type stuff. Usually I like to use a little bit of trans gel. You can just use ATF on this if you like, but I like to run around just a little thin coat of trans gel. Uh, make sure you do not use chassis grease on a transmission. Uh, Trans gel will break down and become transmission fluid. Chassis grease does not, so that is a big no-no. So now that I've got that done, I usually pay attention to where the how these gears came out um, for as far as orientation goes because there's a dot on each side of these gears, so the dot isn't really telling you much. Uh, what I will look for, if I'm unsure about how it was running in there, you can see a little marking here where the outer edge of this uh, is is contacting and the inner port isn't that means that this gear was facing down because it's running around the outer edge of that oiling passage there so i'm going to reinstall this the same way that it came out and then one other thing you can do too uh, before you put the inner gear in is you can take a little bit of trans gel and put on your bushing, your front pump bushing, just to make the converter a little easier to go in and to give it some initial lube there uh, before it starts actually getting transmission fluid to it. So that's technically not required, but it's never a bad idea. And now we're ready to put our inner pump gear in. This is where it becomes orientation specific. If you can see here, there's a tapered side and then there's a not tapered side. 
the not taper side needs to face up like this. And that is because when you're installing the converter, the taper is here to make it easier to get the converter installed. So this is really important that you put this in the correct way. You won't have any function differences, but it will make putting the converter in much, much harder. And then I like to put a decent amount of trans gel on this. You don't want to get too overzealous with the trans gel. If you use a whole bunch of trans gel, you need to do an oil change uh, pretty much immediately. You need to do a fluid service. Uh, so I like to use the minimum amount of trans gel possible, but this is the one area where I will uh, not skimp on it because this is basically, this, this is the heart of your transmission right here. This is your pump. And this is pumping all your fluid. And so I like to make sure that it's got good suction on the first startup. Uh, so that way everything gets oiled quickly. And by putting some trans gel in there, I can do so. And then I usually just smear it around a little bit. So that way there's some trans gel on the stator support surface here. And then I'll just line it up to where the pump gear is in the center of there so it looks like the converter would spline up really easy. You don't have to, it just makes it a little easier when you're putting the converter in it. Alright, so the next thing we're ready to do is we're ready to put our stator support back on. But before we do that, we're going to give this thing one final inspect. Since it's now out of the wash, um, there's a couple things that you want to look for. You just want to verify that this flat piece still looks good. It feels good. You don't feel any, you know, any weird high spots, low spots, no major scratches. This one looks really nice. And then you want to take some time and inspect and make sure that the actual tube is not cracked anywhere. Uh, it's not very common to get a cracked stator tube, but when you do, uh, eventually it will fail because the stator is riding on this and it's fixed and so when you're spooling you're getting all that pressure is trying to twist the stator tube and if it's got a crack here it can bust so uh, that's something to inspect although usually it's not an issue and then you just want to make sure that on a lockup transmission you've got all three of your check balls intact uh, I have Never seen a check ball come out myself, but I have heard that it can happen, so just something worth inspecting. And then this is only going to go together one way, but you can see you've got the suction side and the pressure side, and then the same over here on the stator. So you just line that up and then make sure you've cleaned your bolts too. That's something that's easy to overlook. Put it together where it spines up. Usually, like take it over here off the table, at least until I get the first two bolts started. And then now I can run the rest of the bolts in by hand. Alright, so now we're ready to tighten up the bolts. Before I go and torque these, I'll just take my half inch socket on my regular ratchet. And something to always think about too is if you're using the same socket that you tore down with, make sure you stick a rag in there and clean that socket out uh, because otherwise you're going to get grease and contaminants all over your new bolts. So I'll just run these down snug. And then now we'll get our torque wrench. So these go to 15 foot pounds. Uh, I actually torque them at 17 foot pounds. You don't want to go too crazy with them because you can snap them off. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want them to back out because if these back out, then you lose pump pressure, you lose fluid here, and uh, you'll have a very bad day. And then make sure you always remember to back off the torque on your torque wrench. <laughs> 
Okay, so now the pump is almost completed. Now the next step is going to be putting the ceiling rings on here and the selective washer. I like to start with uh, the hundred thousandths thick selective washer. This is the most common washer that comes out of these transmissions when you tear them apart. And you just lay that bad boy in there like that. And then come over here to your seal kit. You're gonna wanna get your pump seals out. Uh, these pump seals are this silver color seal here. And as you can see, they are an interlocking setup. And so you want to make sure that you don't break those interlocks off of there. If you do, do not run it because it will not build pressure correctly. So I'm kind of anal about these, and I treat them like piston rings in an engine, and I'll actually offset them of each other. So if that gap is over here, I'm going to clock this one 180 degrees over here. I don't really believe it's that important, but that's just the anal coming out in me. So now we're almost done with our pump. Next thing we need to do here is put the rubber O-ring on it. It's really important that you don't forget this because if you do forget this, it will leak. It's easy to identify in your seal kit which one is the one for the pump because it's the biggest one that's in there. And then you want to make sure that you don't roll this when you put it in. You want to make sure it's good and square in the groove. And then I just make sure that I'm on the same side and boom. And then I'll run around this with my fingers just to make sure that it's not twisted. If it's twisted, the pump will have a hard time going in. When it goes in, it'll probably cut it or it'll roll it out and it'll tear the seal up. So now that we've got the seal in, there's only one more thing that we need to do. And that is going to wait until we actually assemble this. But you want to make sure that the plugs are in for all the pressure ports here. You want to make sure they're not sticking out past the pump here, uh, which is kind of common because line pressure will push these out. And so if yours are, basically just take you a you know, screwdriver or your T25 Torx and just tap them back in to where they're flush. And then what I like to do for safe measure is I will take some Permatex right stuff and I will actually fill the holes of these plugs and then wipe it smooth and then w I'll do this when I install it and then once this pump goes in it'll seal these up really nice to where they can never leak again. And then the only other thing on the pump is to make sure that your sealing surface is good and clean. Uh, you can take a Scotch-Brite pad to it like I've done and just make sure that there's no extra gasket material on there. It's nice and flat so you're not going to have any sealing issues. So now your pump is completely done and we can set that off to the side and start on the input shaft and the forward clutch hub.